بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لینئر کنٹرول سسٹمز لیکچر نمبر فور سٹیبلیٹی بیسکس ایم یور انسٹرکٹر یاسر امیر خان اور ایم ویلکم یو آل تو مائی لیکچر نمبر فور سٹیبلیٹی ایز ای ویری ویری امپورٹنٹ کونسپٹ ان لینئر کنٹرول سسٹمز ویدر ایٹ ایز لینئر کنٹرول سسٹمز اور نون لینئر کنٹرول سسٹمز ان دی سبجیکٹ ان دی فیلڈ آف کنٹرول انجینئرنگ سٹیبلیٹی ایز ون آف دی موسٹ امپورٹنٹ کونسپٹس اینڈ دس از چیپٹر نمبر سکس آف یور نارمل نائس ٹیکسٹ بک وی آر کورنگ دس چیپٹر فرام دس کانسیپٹ دس ٹاپک فرام چیپٹر نمبر سکس یو شوڈ ہیو اے کاپی آف دس بک ود یو اینڈ آئی سجیسٹ دیٹ یو شوڈ کیپ یور لیکچر ہینڈ آؤٹس ود یو وائل لسننگ ٹو دی لیکچر آڈیو اینڈ اف دیر از اینی کائنڈ آف پرابلم یو کین آلویز کانٹیکٹ می you can uh, call me on whatsapp you can uh, write email to me and uh, in this way we can uh, work out with this course stability is the most important system specification it is a very very important a crucial property that a system must have if a system is unstable the transient and the steady state errors will not a transient response will not converge to zero and the steady state errors will arise they will not converge to zero with the passage of time an unstable system cannot be designed for a specific transient response or steady state error requirements now what is happening is that we have a system we give it some input some transient in its response comes and then for a good well behaved system that transient dies away eventually with the passage of time then we have a steady state and during the steady state uh, the system exhibits a certain mm, response that closely resembles to that of the input signal or the forcing function now there can be two uh, problems number one either the transient response does not die eventually to zero it remains there and keeps on growing and system's output keeps on increasing for example that can be one problem and that such a system is called an unstable system and then we can have another situation that the steady state comes and the steady state is of a very special nature that the uh, the way the output should be is not the uh, rather it keeps on increasing with the passage of time in other words there is some error at the output that keeps on growing and increasing with the passage of time the transient response has died away but the steady state is very different from what it should be we can have uh, this kind of situation again the system will be uh, called an un unstable system we want a system to be well behaved what we want is that uh, we give some input to it a transient and the output comes and then it eventually decays down to zero after a certain period of time that may take some we allow it to take some time and say for example after after four time constants it becomes uh, the the out as you have seen in the previous lectures it eventually uh, goes down to zero that is a well behaved system and that well behaved system is uh, specifically called a stable system uh, it will be called stable system if uh, there is no problem in the steady state response as well we can call the both transient response and the steady state response both should be well behaved the system should be well behaved with a well behaved transient response and a well well behaved steady state response now there can be another possibility that the transient away dies away and the steady state uh, error keeps on growing as i have just told you and uh, if this is the situation then the system is unstable now a system is stable when the transient dies away goes away eventually and uh, there is uh, the steady state and the steady state error does not grow with the passage of time we can have some steady state error uh, steady state error um, can be removed by using a number of different techniques that will be discussed in later chapters now what this all means is that suppose you have a temperature control system uh, and you are trying to control temperature of certain room now what happens is that uh, you uh, the the, the you turn on the system the temperature the room the temperature of the room is very different from the set point of where you want it to be now 
the system will start operating it will start uh, cooling the room and then uh, a time will come that it mm, goes below the set point then it the, the controller will turn off the air conditioning system then the temperature rises up then it goes above the set point then it turns it on again in this way by a sort of oscillations we tend to go up the temperature tends to approach the uh, set point now but the problem is that the system uh, we want the system to be at 25 degrees centigrade but it settles down at say for example 30 degrees centigrade so what we say that there is a steady state error the steady state has been achieved and the system now has uh, taken control over everything in but uh, but uh, the temperature settles down at say for example 30 degrees centigrade so there is an error of 5 degrees centigrade but this error can this if this error does not grow if this error is a finite number we can uh, reduce this error to zero by using appropriate controller for that we use integral control that will be discussed that in later on in upcoming lectures so we have a techniques that uh, by the help of those techniques we can improve the transient response as well as the steady state response of the system but what's the point the point is that stability is very important system specification and stability means that when you give a bounded input to a system a well behaved signal as input to the system and are uh, in air conditioning example the step input that you turn the system on and you give a set point of 25 degree centigrade is a well defined and a well behaved and a uh, bounded input for that the system output that is the actual temperature of the room that should also remain bounded it should not become unbounded with the passage of time if it remains bounded then we say that the system is stable if it does not remain bounded then we say that the system is unstable that's the point now if you refer back to the previous uh, two lectures uh, the response of the system has two parts one is the natural part and the other is the forced part the natural part is also called transient and it should eventually decay down to zero it should vanish away with the passage of time there is another part of the response that is the forced response forced response is because of the forcing function because of the input signal this part should be bounded both of the parts should be bounded but uh, uh, the transient part eventually decays down to zero the forced path should be bounded it should not become zero but it should be bounded it should not mm, grow indefinitely in to infinity if that happens then the definitely c function of t would grow to infinity unbounded positive or negative infinity and then we say that the system is unstable for a system to be stable ct should remain finite it should remain bounded the response should remain bounded it should, it, it may become very large but it should always remain smaller than the bound uh, on the positive side as well as the negative side for example if i say define the bound is 1000 volts then the output of the system may increase up to 1000 volt and should not go above that 1000 volt means that if we have an ac signal then its positive peak should not uh, exceed 1000 volts and its negative peak peak should not exceed uh, minus 1000 volts now what i have said so far is that a linear time invariant system is stable if its natural response approaches zero as the time approaches to infinity a linear time invariant system is unstable if the natural response grows without bound as the time approaches infinity now so far i have used two terms one is stable the other is unstable there is another term that is marginally stable or marginal stability a linear time invariant system is marginally stable if the natural response neither natural response we are not talking about the force response we are talking about the natural response natural response neither decays nor grows but remains constant or oscillates as the time approaches to infinity so uh, as uh, it's very clear from this statement suppose we have a system we give it some input and the system starts oscillating we have undamped frequency at the output 
This is exactly the case what you have seen in the previous lecture about an undamped system. Second order undamped system which has poles on the imaginary J omega axis. We give it a step input and it start oscillating. At the output we get a, uh, oscillation, sustained oscillations. They don't grow with the passage of time in uh, amplitude and they don't decay to zero. That is the case of marginally stable system. But problem is that marginally stable system, there is a mathematical reasoning behind what I am just saying. Next, that uh, when uh, we have a marginally stable system and we give it suppose a step input and it starts oscillating but the oscillations don't grow with the passage of time and they don't decay to zero with the passage of time. Now, but when we will give it an input which has a complex frequency in it uh, uh, that has uh, that um, we give it an input which has a frequency in it that frequency matches the frequency of the imaginary axis poles then what happens is that the response of the system will grow with the passage of time. A system which is marginally stable, its response is not growing with the passage of time, but that response will start growing for that special kind of input. Now what I mean by this is that, suppose we have a case where the value of omega is say 1, so that the second order undamped system has uh, poles at j and minus j on the j omega axis. Omega is 1, we have a pole at j and minus j. Now when we give an input signal to this system which has a frequency omega equals to 1 radians per second, then the response of this system will start growing with the passage of time and it will become unbounded. Otherwise it, the response remains you know bounded. It does not, it, it neither decays to 0 nor grows to 0. Uh, then uh, this kind of situation is called that the system is marginally stable. So what you have to keep in your mind is that there is a part uh, between stable and unstable system there is a marginally stable system. Stable system has poles on the left hand side left hand side of the j omega axis. They have negative real parts so that when we find the response of the system the exponential has negative uh, minus num negative number multiplied with the time and the exponential decays to zero eventually. This is what you have already seen in previous lecture if you have done with the actual working. And uh, if the pole is on the right hand side of the omega axis, they have a positive real part, then when we will find the response of it, this is what we will see in the next upcoming slide then the response transient response will grow with the passage of time and the system is said to be unstable the system is bad it's unstable its response will become unbounded after a certain period of time and in between this we have a marginally stable system marginally stable system has poles on the imaginary axis they don't have a real part real part is zero they only have imaginary part j omega minus j omega plus j omega such systems have the property that when we give them some bounded input, their output remains bounded, but its natural response does not decay to zero. It remains at a constant value. That kind of system is called marginally stable system. Marginally stable systems are between the stable and unstable system. But marginally stable system have a spe special property that I've just told you in this uh, slide that when we give them an input which has a frequency in it that matches the frequency of the imaginary pole then the response their output will become unbounded just like that of an unstable system so marginally stable are also regarded uh, are not regarded as good well behaved systems like we treat the stable systems so we want the poles to be on the left hand side of j omega axis and if they are on the j omega axis then that's bad if they are on the right hand side of the j omega axis that is even more bad now I give you the formal definition of stability. A system is stable if every bounded input yields a bounded output. This definition is also called Bebo stability definition. Bounded input, bounded output, stability definition. 
Now this definition says that we have a system and we give it uh, some input and that input is bounded. That is, it means that it is bounded from the top and the below, positive and the negative sides both. It remains within a bound. Bound is some finite number. It can be a large, big number, but it's a finite number less than infinity. We give this type of a signal to a system and this system produces an output, whether that is transient or steady state, both, both are included in it. The output of the system remains within another bound that both the bounds at the input and the output may not be the same, but there is a, some bound at the output and the output is bounded from the top and the below from the top and the bottom that is positive side and the negative side as well. It remain if it remains bounded and it does not grow and become infinity, then that type of system is called a stable system. So according to this uh, Bebo stability definition, a system is stable if every bounded input yields a bounded output. That is just what we have uh, seen in the previous slide. A system is unstable if any bounded input yields an unbounded output. Uh, uh, this means that uh, we say that a given system is unstable if we give it a bounded input. Our input is well behaved, but the output is not well, be well behaved. The output is unbounded. It for a bounded input, it increases with the passage of time and uh, crosses any kind of bound and that is it becomes infinity. Uh, that is the case for the, uh, that is the case of the unstable system. Physically, an unstable system whose natural response grows without bound can cause damage to the system, adjacent property or even human life. So unstable systems are bad, they are dangerous, they are a problem. Uh, their response, uh, their natural response grow without any bound. So imagine the case of, a, for example, uh, you have a car and you are uh, trying to drive it at a, a constant speed and you use a cruise control system. Due to some fault, your cruise control system malfunctions and the speed keeps on increasing and growing, growing and growing. You can imagine that what this can result in. What is the con what would be the consequence of this situation? If it becomes uh, out, it it may become out of control. So you can imagine you can have any system. You can ha imagine of any system. You can take, for example, the case of a furnace. Uh, the furnace is heating some boiler, and uh, it becomes unstable, or it is unstable by nobody. And no uh, sane human being would or an engineer would design an unstable system would use an unstable furnace system he will he uh, nobody will do that therefore i'm giving you the example the other way around i'm saying that you have a stable system and then due to some malfunction it becomes unstable and it starts heating the boiler without any control and it the temperature keeps on increasing 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 Definitely temperature cannot become infinity, but it will become so large that uh, the system will not be able to handle that high temperature and uh, even the pressure, if the pressure goes beyond a certain value, then the boiler would explode. So you can imagine of such scenarios, therefore we try to have stable systems. We never design unstable systems, no sane human being or a control engineer would just make an unstable system and would like to use that anywhere. Therefore, the systems are designed to be stable, but uh, if they were not designed to be stable or they were unstable, then this would happen. Uh, nuclear explosion and a nuclear power reactor. You can say that the atom bomb is an unstable system and uh, the chain reaction is you can say uh, you can imagine what happens and then we have a con when we have a control system in a nuclear reactor that is a that is supposed to be a stable system and if it is stable system it keeps on working and if due to any reason it becomes unstable then a chain reaction will start and the output that is the uh, nuclear energy that will keep on growing and we will have a disaster now, after giving these examples, uh, let me read from here. From the perspective of the time response plot of a physical system, instability is displayed by transient, 
that grows without bound and consequently a total response that does not approach a steady state value or other uh, forced response. What, me what it means that from the perspective of the time response plot of a physical system, if you look at the time response graph or plot of the physical system, instability is apparent or visible uh, by uh, seeing, looking at a transient that grows without any bound in and keeps on increasing and consequently the system is not able to reach the steady state of the force response. This is exactly what you will see in the next example. Now consider an example over here. We have an unstable system. We have this, we call it unstable system because if we make it pole zero plot, you can see that the pole of the system is at S is equal to plus one. The pole of the system is on the right hand side of the j omega axis. Whenever we have the poles on the right hand side of the j omega axis, we say that the system is unstable. Uh, just by looking at the transfer function of the system, we say that the system is unstable. Now, unstable system means that its transient response should grow unbounded. Uh, now, let's see what happens to its uh, res transient response and its response. We consider the step response of the system. We give a step input to the system. Our input signal is a step signal, unit step, 1 upon s. The response of the system, this g of s response is c of s equals to 1 upon s, bracket s minus 1. Now, uh, using the same uh, steps that uh, we have seen in the previous lectures, uh, try to find out the response of the system. The step response of the system for, uh, in time domain, before finding that, we must uh, follow the steps of making the partial fraction expansion. C function of s equals to a upon s plus b upon s minus 1. We are making two partial fractions. Then we will use the Laplace transform table and find out the response of the system in time domain. Now, as an exercise, find the uh, values of these coefficients a and b, what you have just seen in the previous lectures. Uh, when we take the uh, Laplace transform, inverse transform of this, we get c function of time to be equal to a plus b exponential e raised to the power minus minus t. Uh, and that becomes e raised to the power plus t. This positive power in the exponential is uh, yeah, the power of uh, e is actually the culprit. If t keeps on increasing, this uh, term will keep on growing, becoming larger and larger. So what is happening is that because of this pole, which is on the right hand side of the j omega axis, the value of the s is uh, the value of the polynomial, the root of the polynomial is positive. Because of this, when we make the partial fraction expansion and then we take the inverse Laplace transform, we have e raised to the power plus t, plus 1t. This plus positive number multiplied with t in the power of e makes this term unbounded, grow, become unbounded bounded, uh, um, when t approaches infinity. When t uh, becomes very large and uh, when t approaches infinity, this e grows to infinity. It will always exceed any bound you put on the output of the system. So what we have done so far is that we have given a bounded input to the system in form of a unit step signal. Uh, but the output of the system, that is c function of t, it has a bounded term, that is a. And then it has an unbounded term b e raised to the power plus t. So this means that c would become unbounded when t approaches infinity. Therefore, the system we are talking about is unstable. So whenever we have the poles on the right hand side of j omega axis, the problem starts. The, whenever the, the real power of the pole is positive, the problem starts. The exponentials have positive power and they grow and grow and grow and become unbounded. So therefore, we say that the system, given system is unstable. This is the, how we find a system to be unstable and this is why we call it to be uh, call it unstable. Because it's uh, transient response will grow and become unbounded either on the positive side or on the negative side but it will become unbounded. Now this is what I was saying. When we apply the limit 
that t approaches infinity then ct becomes infinity ct becomes infinity no matter what bound you put on ct at the output it will always exceed it as t approaches infinity so therefore we say that with a bounded input that is a unit step signal in our case the output becomes unbounded therefore the given system is unstable now uh, we can have open loop systems we can have closed loop systems we may have an open loop system that is unstable but when we connect it in a closed loop we connect it in a feedback path that may become stable system we may have a system which has poles on the uh, right hand side of jmega axis in open loop configuration but when we make a closed loop system with a feedback connection it becomes a stable system so what we want is that uh, we whatever the system is uh, the overall system uh, if it is a closed loop system then the uh, overall system um, uh, if it is a closed loop system and it's closed loop poles when we make the transfer function of the given closed loop system with g upon 1 plus gh and they turn out to be uh, stable poles gives us all the poles are stable all the poles that are on the left hand side of j mega axis then we say that the given overall system with closed loop is stable the plant within the system may be unstable but we can have a stable overall system with the closed loop configuration so what uh, i am saying over here is that a closed loop system whose closed loop poles are on the left of the left hand half plane of the j mega axis is a stable system even if the open loop in open loop configuration the open loop system has their pole on the right hand side of j mega axis but when the closed when it is when that system is connected in closed closed loop configuration and we have a new system and that closed loop system has a new transfer function and that transfer function poles are on the left hand side of the j mega axis then we say that the system is stable and when we when the poles are on the j mega axis then we say that system is marginally stable but marginally stable system have a condition as well they should have a multiplicity of 1 this means that if you find the roots of the denominator polynomial of a given transfer function and they turn out to be imaginary for example we have uh, plus 2j and minus 2j then they would be on the imaginary axis there are there are only two poles one is the plus 2j and the other is minus 2j that is the case of a marginally stable system but if suppose you have a, a system which has four poles on the j mega axis and uh, can you give uh, any example of such a system which has these two uh, poles plus 2j plus 2j then minus 2j and minus 2j we have four poles two poles at 2j and two poles at minus 2j then this kind of system would not be a marginally stable system it would be unstable system it will be regarded as unstable system marginally stable systems are those whose poles have a multiplicity of 1 but when we uh, by, uh, uh, the example that i have just given you with two poles at plus 2j and two poles at minus 2j they have a multiplicity of 2 this means that we have two poles at 2j and we have two poles at minus 2j this system would not be marginally all, uh, uh, although the poles are on the j mega axis but it will be an unstable system so this is a point that you must keep in your mind because when you will give it any input to this this kind of system the output will be unbounded let me give you a x an exercise over here which you should submit to me scan it and this is the assignment of this uh, lecture the exercise is that first of all say that uh, consider a system which has a which have poles at plus 2j plus 2j minus 2j minus 2j it, it has four poles all of them are on the j mega axis two of the poles are 2j and the other two are minus 2j what first step you have to do is that you have to construct the polynomial from it and that will become the denominator polynomial and for this uh, assignment you must have a discussion with each other try to become you know uh, discuss with the other students and then try to do it as a uh a combined assignment but everyone will individually submit this assignment now we have we will we should have a polynomial of degree 4 in the denominator and then try to work out its step response in the same way that i have just shown you in the previous example and 
show that the response to a step input becomes unbounded and this is a unstable system this is the only assignment of this lecture this is what you have to submit before the next lecture now consider a system that is uh, 3 upon s s plus 1 s plus 2 uh, what uh, you should do as an exercise over here with this uh, in this slide of the lecture take out a piece of paper and try to find out the closed loop system transfer function and then the closed loop poles the closed loop poles should be as shown over here one of the pole is at minus 2.62 the other at minus 1.64 plus j 1.047 and it's conjugate and then uh, make a symbolic model of this system and give it a step input and uh, the simulate the waveform of this system this is your exercise for this lecture and uh, please do it just now open the matlab symbolic and do it pause the video and do that exercise now we have another system where the plot the transfer function of the plot is s upon 7 upon s s plus 1 s plus 2 uh, find out the closed loop transfer function and the closed loop poles of this system you will find out the poles they will have a positive real part then this these closed loop poles mean that the system is unstable when we uh, connected in uh, closed loop configuration although the given system previously as well and now both uh, open loop systems that is the plant they are stable systems if you try to find out the poles of the system we have uh, s equal at minus one minus two and we have one pole at s equal to zero so that we can say that it's a uh, uh, it's a marginally stable system because as is s equal to zero means that it's on the j omega axis Although the system is not unstable, uh, the system is not unstable. But when we connect it in the closed loop configuration, the system becomes unstable because the closed loop poles are now unstable. They have positive real part. So try to make a symbolic model of this system and uh, give it a step input, and the, you should get this type of response. Try to get this response. This is a practice uh, exercise of this lecture. Please do it. Take your lecture seriously, and. Uh, if you have any kind of uh, question, confusion, do not hesitate to ask from me. You can call me, you can record your voice message on the WhatsApp group, you can write an email address, email to me. And uh, please uh, do your assignment, which has been assigned in this uh, lecture, and submit it uh, to your uh, class representative, and uh, they will forward that email that to me don't directly send email to me but rather give it to your CR and they will make a list and then email to me try to keep the size of the handwritten assignment scanned version of the handwritten assignment as uh, 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 size of the file as short as possible without compromising too much on the resolution thank you